All right, so let's take a let's take a look at the TS diagram uh, in relation to the steam tables. This is an um, I took these numbers from the steam tables, if you remember, right? So we have uh, the steam tables are essentially tables where uh, we collect uh, various properties for the fluids we're talking about. The saturated uh, steam tables for water come in two flavors, as we've said. Uh, one's in increments of pressure, the other one's in increments of temperature. Here we're talking about the, uh, uh, the pressure, the pressure ones. So, by notation, we use F as a subscript to denote liquid. And actually, that's a saturated. Remember that magic word? Saturated liquid. And we denote G. Uh, with G, we denote saturated vapor. Okay. And what is H? Anton? What is H? Enthalpy. Enthalpy, that's correct. Well done. Enthalpy, right? And what is enthalpy? Well, it's energy. It's heat energy. We said we have uh, two lines here, two pressures, 7 and 0 0.1 bar. Now, I write bars, and that's a unit of pressure this way, that's because that's, it's, well, one reason they're in, it's industry standard, and it actually means bar absolute. So when you're out there in the field, you have wells that are different elevations, you need to uh, take uh, that into account and put them all in a common frame of reference so you can put them into your model when you go back to your office, being a geothermal engineer and all. Okay, so that's why we use um, absolute um, values of pressure. The good news is uh, um, the steam tables are also given in absolute values of pressure. So we can use these values directly. Now, what we were going to do is see how these values here graph on the T's diagram. So the, I got two points for where the line of seven bar crosses, crosses the saturation dome point, one here and then another point there. So this point would be uh, it lies on the saturated liquid line. Okay. If I want to note the enthalpy at that point, then I would use H for enthalpy. Since it's saturated liquid, I would of course use the subscript F, and I would make a note of the pressure that it's at. So that would be at 7 bar A. Now this is, this is good practice because as you're going through your system when you're solving, uh, solving this problem, if you write it like this and then you go and look up all your values to plug them into the equations, uh, you got less chances of uh, looking up uh, the wrong thing. So theoretically, if we say, and uh, of course this is, this is not to scale, but if, if we assume that this is at 7, then that would be what? It would be 697.1 kilojoules per kilogram. Never, ever, ever, ever forget your units. And as I said in class, if you don't put units in, um, uh, in your calculations, what is the assumption, Anton? What do we assume that we're talking about? We are talking about oranges. Exactly. So if you happen to be solving a problem and the answer you're looking for is oranges, then you're lucky. If it's not, and in this case the chances are very slim, then uh, you will lose marks. Right, Anton? Yeah. Right. Okay. So, uh, moving on um, to the next point. Here, we have the saturated vapor line. So, in uh, a similar way, if I want to denote this point, the enthalpy, I'm going to use H. Okay, now, because I have saturated vapor, I will use G at, as my subscript. And I know that it's at the 7 bar pressure, that would be at 7 bar A. And uh, if I read that from my table, then that would be equal to 2, 7, 6, 2.7. What? Kilojoules 
her to the ground. Perfect. All right. Well, what about what about this? Right. You have the line in between the two. You'll typically find this in the same tables. Uh, in the workbook that uh, I gave you for, for the class, that was not in there. Well, uh, it's because you can very easily calculate it. In fact, let's see, we have some space here. I'll just write down here. H F G is equal to H G minus H F. So whether you want to take uh, 2762.7 minus 697.1 or look at the value directly, this, if we're talking about 7 bar absolute pressure, would be 2065.6 kilojoules per kilogram. Now my question is, how would you graph this on the TS diagram? It's not a point as such. Remember, in thermodynamics, we're interested in states. Put a straight line in between these two points. When I'm here, I have 100% saturated vapor. When I'm here, I have 100% saturated liquid. The difference between the two is actually this line segment. And this would be H F G at seven bar A. It is important because it is what um, we tap into as uh, energy engineers to produce electricity. The energy required to change 100% of my fluid from the saturated vapor phase to the saturated liquid phase. In this particular case, I'm extracting the energy from the system because I'm going from vapor to liquid, is termed the latent heat of vaporization. Typically, we say that it takes um, a greater amount of energy to change the phase of a system than to bring the, uh, uh, to raise the temperature of the system up to this point. So yes, the latent heat of vaporization, that's important. Okay, now let's look at the next line, 0 0.1 bar. I'm gonna take this point here, and that point there. And this line. Let's say this one. And I'm going to delete this. This would actually be HFG at 0 0.1 bar A. How much is that? We have it up here. It's 2393.0. What? Kilojoules per kilogram. Now, if I'm going from point 0.1 to point 0.2, I'm actually adding HFG to the system to take its phase from the saturated liquid phase to 100% saturated vapor. This is equal, as we said, to uh, 2065.6. We're going to see what happens there and how we find ourselves from 2 to 3. But if we are 3, say, and we want to go to 4, so we're actually operating at 0 0.1 bar, what we need to do is extract HFG at 0 0.1 bar to go from the liquid, uh, the, the vapor, the saturated vapor phase to the saturated liquid phase. That is equal to uh, 2,393 kilojoules per kilogram. Any questions?
Nu är det fint, Kalin.